Hello lovely people, welcome to my channel, it's Healy here, here, Saturday Night Station. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today's post, I wanted to share with you two things that I have made from the Burda 3 2024 issue, of which I thought that this was a really good issue, um, and it had quite um, a lot of potential things that I could uh, sew from it, but I decided to be more pragmatic and practical and try and create something to fit into my... Uh, lifestyle and to fit into the gaps that I had in my wardrobe, particularly as we're moving towards spring. So with regards to my sewing plans, I had planned to make skirt number 102, which I managed to do, so that was pretty good, and also to make a uh, top number 118 which I managed to do, and that's the blouse that I am wearing right now. And if you remember um, previously in the video where I did the sewing plans, for the blouse, I had two options of fabric. One was this uh, viscose crepe fabric, which has got a lovely satiny feel to it and a beautiful drape, or the other one was more of a cotton viscosity mix. So I decided to make it with this one because that was going to suit the fabric that I had chose to make the skirt in. So anyway, let's dive straight into it. I'll start off with the skirt because that's the first one that I made. So with this skirt in the magazine, um, one of the issues that I had with it was the D-rings. So I didn't do any D-rings. D-rings have not worked out well for me in anything that I've used that has them. And so I didn't do that. Um, the other thing that I didn't do was add just the single tab that has a D-ring. And I think it's meant for you to hang your keychains on it or something. I wasn't too sure. But I personally didn't want the tabs and the flappy things uh, because it just seemed unnecessary to me. I was going to put some Velcro tabs to keep the flaps from closing, but that wasn't necessary by the time I actually sewed it up because the fabric that I used, it um, has a bit of spandex in it. So I made it, and the first time that I sewed it up, I sewed it up exactly as um, is with the seam pockets, and the pockets less the extraneous uh, design extra bits. And it comes together very, very quickly. It's a super easy to make a pattern because it doesn't have zippers because anytime you're adding in zippers or button closures you're almost doubling the time it takes to complete a project but this one doesn't have that it actually has an elasticated waist which i thought was quite attractive now my fabric has a little bit more body to it and it was around the time that i got to the point of putting in the elastic that i realized that there might be just some tiny minor issues with it because in the magazine they use a slightly thin I think it's flannel it's some sort of a flannel fabric that they use in the magazine but it's quite a thin drapey fabric so it means that the gathering that you have around the elastication it doesn't cause too much uh, visual bulk because it's a little bit more drapey but once the fabric has got a bit more bulk to it a little bit more stability to it you then end up having extra bulk that is hard to get rid of. And I'll explain to you just now. Since the waist has to be uh, wide enough for you to be able to pull it up past the hip. So what I ended up having was, and can you see, there's this sort of bulk that you have and no amount of pressing is getting it down because my fabric has got the lovely body, which means that because it's got that lovely body, the vent at the front, the slit, the opening at the front looks really beautiful and the pockets look really lovely because it is a nicely structured um, fabric. So it's a bit of, you know, a double-edged sword in that way. And when I made it, um, I did think of putting in belt loops at first, but I didn't. I was like, oh, I'll just see what it looks like just casually. I thought it would work along with the pocket seams. And when I did put it on, it just wasn't working as much because um, I, I sort of underestimated, no, I overestimated the size of my waist. And it's because when I was making it, I was wearing... My winter clothing has got so many layers to it. So it it tends to make me feel much thicker than I actually am. 
So when I measured the elastication around my waist and then added in that inch or so um, that you have to do in order so that it doesn't uh, bunch into your skin too much, by the time I got to the point of finishing putting the elastic in and what have you, it became clear to me that it just had just a little bit of slack in it, which meant that rather than the skirt sitting on my waist like this, it was sort of dropping slightly and then it, it just threw things off a little bit. Um, and I'm showing you on here the video of me wearing when I was wearing it just after I made it. And then the other thing that happened as well was that the side seam pockets, they were just gaping. Mm -hmm. Because I was in the process of sewing it and it sews, it comes together so beautifully. It, it was such a fun project to sew. I really enjoyed sewing this skirt. I can't overstate that enough. So I didn't actually try it on because I was just having a, a fun time just sewing it. And I managed to finish it in one sitting. It took me about three hours to sew it. It's really, really easy. I can't stress that enough. But the elastic waist became too big because it was sitting on me. So then I realized two things. I had to remove the pockets, um, the side seam pockets. It still does have the, the patch pockets, which eh, I don't really use. I think to me, the skirt, um, I realized that uh, pockets don't actually necessarily work on it for me uh, because of the fabric choice that I used um, in the gaping side seam pockets. Though it was nice to have the pockets to be able to chuck my hands into the pockets, they just looked so unsightly. And even when I was out and about with it, each time I caught a glimpse of my a reflection of myself or when I looked down the side and I could see the gaping pocket, it was unpleasant. So I was just like, the pockets have to go. Yes, pockets are everything except for when they mess about the design lines um, of a garment. And so I removed the pockets and that was quite easy. I just sewed it up and then I cut them um, off and then I added belt loops. So because I wanted the skirt to be able to sit high up, on the narrowest part of my waist. So I added six belt loop, belt loops. So two over here, uh, two at the back and two at the side seam. And you can see here, you've got sort of like the excess fabric. There's the dots there that give it a little bit extra shaping, but mm, I just, it wasn't. But to me, it works a lot better now that I've added the belt loops and I can belt it up as high as I wanted uh, to go. And I removed the pockets and that works really well. And that, and, and I love that. Um, oh, very quickly, the other thing that I did want to mention was that I'm probably going to try and sew this a second time so that I can do a sewing tutorial on it because um, I thought that the instructions in the birder thing make things so unnecessarily difficult because they instruct you to sew up this center front seam first before you attach the pockets, which is so much harder to do. It's so much harder to do all this stuff when you've got a cylindrical tube. What I did was I attached the pockets, right? So I did the side seams with the side seam pockets first, and then I attached the patch pockets on there before I then sewed up this center front seam. And it doesn't make sense to me why you would say sew up that center front seam, then attach the pockets. It's so much more difficult. But when you do it the way where everything is laid out flat, you can get it done so much quicker, which is why it was a lot of fun. I like the skirt, as I said. It's very fashionable, very chic, very elegant. And then moving on to... Gosh, I ended up talking too long about the skirt. Uh, moving on to uh, number 118, the blouse, which, okay, so I will admit that the blouse, it looks great. It looks and it feels wonderful um, on me. It's got this lovely relaxed sleeve over here, so I don't have to worry about sweat stains or anything like that. It's, and I can move in it and it's, Really, really wonderful. <laughs> However, this was a nightmare to sew up, my friends. It was a nightmare to sew up. So first of all, the fabric is really gorgeous. It's this beautiful drapey, viscosy satin uh, fabric. But this is so slippy. It's so slippery. It doesn't stay 
even on the ironing board. Each time I would put it onto the ironing board, if there was even a little bit of an imbalance, even just a centimeter extra fabric on one side, it would just... <laughs> and so it was... It, it, it was challenging to use, um, to say the least. And even on the sewing machine, it would keep on slipping off. And I always had to be making sure that it was um, held up properly. So it ended up taking so much longer to finish than it would have if I'd, say, used a cotton tan alone. So that was it. And I finished it in two sittings. Um, and that was because... I realized that if I didn't finish it on the second sitting, I wasn't going to finish it because I had so many problems with this um, with this fabric. And come, the, most of them were self-inflicted, but we'll, we'll come to that later. Um, so first of all, the fabric is super slippery, right? So that contributed to so many challenges. Um, the second thing was that it frays like mad. Like it frays like crazy. So I had to be cutting it and doing any overlocking that needed to be done straight away. Otherwise, it would just begin to fray. And the fraying property meant that the buttonholes were a nightmare. <laughs> a nightmare. So the first um, five buttonholes down here, I did these on the machine, right? Um, and they don't look good. I'll be honest with you. They're not very good looking buttonholes. I had to use tons of fray check on them in um, even after I had cut through the buttonholes because when you do the sewing machine buttonhole it leaves a strip of fabric between the zigzag stitches and so when you cut it you rely on the fact that your fabric doesn't fray in order for for them to look nice and it well this one it was all furry it, it, the moment you cut into it it was like this fur came out and so I then had it had to use the tiny little scissors to be snipping away at the fur without cutting into the bits of the thread and then using loads, copious amount of fray check just to try and stop it from looking frayed. So they're not very neat looking buttonholes, but thankfully the print does kind of get away with it. So that was a, a problem. And then the machine just would not do these two buttonholes here because of the bulk around the collar. Um, and so you can see there's a lot of sewing mischief going on there, right? And so I ended up having to do it by hand, right? Which presented a lot of problems with itself because when you're doing the buttonholes by hand, you have to cut the hole through first and then you do the blanket stitch around it. Well, the moment I cut into this tiny area where the collar stand is foom. <laughs> it was like foom. and then I had to stop put some fray check on it let that dry because fray check is like a glue and then sew over the fray check and then put some more fray check on and just basically try and just chuck it in it was a nightmare and by the time I finished it I was like I'm done with this and then I tried it on, right? <laughs> and also, never mind the um, the collars. So the pattern pieces for the collar and the collar stand are really tiny and on a slippery fabric. So I ended up having to, I, I block interfaced um, a rectangular piece that was big enough for the collar pieces. So the interfaced uh, collar stand and collar pieces, I cut those off of block interfaced uh bit which block interfacing is can be so wasteful but never mind about that but the uninterfaced pattern pieces when i tried to cut them out just as is it just wasn't working because it the the grain kept on shifting and what have you so i ended up having to use a rectangular piece of fabric sewing on the cut interfaced collar base onto a rectangular big piece of fabric and then cutting after I'd sewed it on and that was the only way that I could um, get past it but yeah it was such a nightmare because of the slipperiness of the fabric. I only had one meter of the fabric and I managed to get the pattern pieces onto the one meter but it meant that the sleeves had to be cut on the cross grain rather than on the straight grain. Now, the drape of this fabric is really beautiful when it's on the straight grain, but you put it on the cross grain, it doesn't quite have the same wonderful drape. And this is what happened with the sleeves. So I tried it on for the first time, right? And it literally, I looked like, a, you know, an American football player 
it made me look as if my shoulders are all bunched up because the gathering on here, no matter how much pressing I was giving it, it was going boom because they're on the cross grain. If they had been on the straight grain, they would have had the lovely drape, but they were like that. And I just had to stop. I was just like, oh, no, I'm done. And it so happened that um, this past weekend, we'd been watching a Le Comte de Monte Cristo, the French version made in, I think it was in the 90s, with Gerard Gepetto as um, Edmond Dantes in it. And it's set in Napoli or post Napoleonic times. And so the undershirts that the men wear is quite similar in style to this. But what they do with the gathering on here on the men's way is they, they have all this pleating that is stitched down and it gives it that billowy look. And I was watching that and I thought, oh, I could try that with the shirt because I'd given up hope on it when I saw the sleeves like that. I was just like, oh, okay. You win some, you lose some. And I was quite frustrated. And so the next day, I basically took it out and I did some top stitching. I can see it. To bring down the, um, the puffiness. So I did six rows of parallel top stitching on the raglan sleeve. And that brought it down enough to what you see now so i mean on here you can still see a bit of the you see it won't go down no matter how much i press it this won't go down because it's on the cross grain because i cut it on the cross grain um but yeah so i thought that this was a little bit more acceptable at least because i wasn't having the bulk on here and so that's what we ended up with and that solved the issue and that made it more wearable for me the other alteration that i made was that i increased the length of the sleeves the actual sleeve length on the pattern itself would have put them about here for me but i lengthened them and i did an elasticated cuff and as you can see this is the selvage edge <laughs> because I cut the sleeves on the grain. And it was quite satisfying to use up all the fabric. So I was just left with little, tiny little scraps of fabric and I managed to get this out of one meter of fabric. Um, actually, let me show you to untucked. All right. And there we have it. Untucked. So it's just got a straight hem. So really lovely <laughs> so despite the fact that it was a nightmare to uh, sew with the fabric and i did manage to then fix the the hunching look issue it's a really lovely top and it's a really lovely fabric but i think i chose the wrong pattern for it i think this type of fabric you need something that has got minimal amounts of closures so for me the fact that i had a button placket that had to be done the collar stand and the collar there were bits where i had to use um to change my needle to a shops needle because it was easily uh pulling i don't know if you can see here where the threads have pulled and you've got a little bit of distortion in there and that happened until I then changed to a sharps, I think it was a 70. Yeah, I think it was a 70-10. So it needed a sharp, um, really sharp micro, um, sharp one, a sharp needle to not have those issues. And there's several places where that happened, but I think you'd need to have a mic <laughs> microscopic magnifying glass to be able to see. But it was just a little bit frustrating for me, but I'm glad that I finished it. I think... I won't be making a second one of this. I thought that I would make a second one of it when I was so you know when I was um, looking at it, and despite the fact that I love the style in principle, these sorts of shoulders um, as they come are not the best for me, which kind of makes sense because under the soft gamine uh, rules, you need these to be more uh, close fitting, more. Uh, tapered whereas this raglan sleeve it's it's really quite uh full on and i got so 
caught up in the loveliness of the line drawing of the whatever, I forgot to really think about some of the, the lines that suit me best. And yeah, it is lovely. It really, really is lovely. But I do think that um, there were probably other patterns that would have suited this particular fabric better. Like um, there's the... The top in for 2024, which is quite simple, it just says the band around here. And then you've got the armholes. So there's minimal buttonholes and things like that. And I think it would be suitable for, for that. The other thing that I think that this fabric would have been wonderful for would have been a pair of pajamas because this feels so comfortable. It is so nice against the skin. And I was just thinking, man, I missed the boat on that one. I should have bought enough of this to make myself a two-piece set of just some lovely, classy, lounging pyjamas. It would have been perfect for it because it feels so comfortable. Styling-wise, I've been loving wearing, I've been wearing um, it with this skirt. Well, I mean, this, this is only a few days old. I only finished this a few days ago. But so far, it's working quite well with the skirt. And I can see it working well with my uh, navy blue jeans as well all tucked in i can't even imagine wearing it not tucked in but it's very comfortable i can actually do day-to-day -day stuff with it because there's a lot of movement so it's wonderful in that regards the shoulder issue is probably a lot to do with the fact that it is on the cross grain and just nitpicking on the whole concept of using the soft gamine principles does mean that the raglan sleeve doesn't suit me as best as, say, um, a normal shoulder seam. But yeah, I, I do like it. I decided to go with shank buttons. I was initially, when I started the project, I was going to do self-cover buttons. But then when I realized how sleepy this fabric was, I was just like, yeah, that's not going to happen. And I just used the shank uh, buttons. Was there anything else? The instructions were quite good. Um, I feel that the instructions are um, as good as they would be. It's not like, say, with the skirt where it didn't make sense to me that they had it in the cylinder. If you follow the instructions on there, you'll be fine. I didn't do the pocket on here because I never use um, I never use these breast pockets. So I just didn't see the point of putting it in. But yeah, I do think that it is a good addition to my wardrobe. It is quite versatile as a top. It will go with a lot of other things in my wardrobe, particularly the spring wardrobe. And I think it does, because of the sheen on the fabric, it does have a very elevated, classy, chic look to it. And even though it's only been out in the wild once so far, I got quite a few um, compliments and, and that was quite um, lovely. And um, it feels like this outfit, particularly of these two, the skirt and the top, is as close to almost an Italian aesthetic that I've managed to achieve so far in my journey of trying to improve my style. So I've had a really... Um, I think I've had a good time making these two. I've learned a lot um, from them, particularly um, in terms of the drapey fabrics, because I've got a few more of these really lovely um, crepey type fabrics that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. And I just now know that I need to be a bit more mindful about what I choose for them. <laughs> Thank you so much if you've watched until the end. I do appreciate you. It's ended up being quite longer than I wanted it to, but I had quite a lot of stuff to uh, talk about with this. I have some other finished garments, but I'll do a separate video um, for that. I, again, thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you staying until the end. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and like it supports the channel. And I will be back very soon with another video that is sewing related. And until then, happy sewing, everyone. Bye. <laughs>